Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back for another episode of D Step Bootstrap playing MechWarrior Online. I noticed I was. Oh, I got a message. I noticed that I did not talk about narcs like I said I would in episode 1, so I'll go over that in episode 2. Where you get narcs and what they are is in your mech lab tab loadout for specific mechs like. It's a missile. It's a missile class. And of course, this one doesn't have a missile, so we'll find one that has missiles. Probably my lights in Archer Cheetah Prime. Loadout. Does it have narcs? Nope. The missile class. It's in the bottom. A narc is a weapon that shoots a rocket projectile that's non-explosive. What it does is it flies towards wherever you're aiming it and if it hits a mech it sticks to it and gives away its coordination you'll get the narcs in the missile class which will be here but obviously i only have lurms which is lrms which is long range missiles this is where their ammo is but if i had a narc weapon equipped to it it would be available in the weapons slot now then what i had shown there which i'll show again I only had, let's see, I had Hero Scope and Snowblazer, which you saw in that one episode. Snowblazer is a close range, five uh, clan small pulse laser, close range, and the Hero Scope, obviously, scope means long range. I bought, it wasn't a Jenner, I bought a whole bunch of mechs not too long ago. I bought the Shadow Cats. Shadow cats are pretty awesome. I'm making money at the moment to build them up. I bought a whole bunch. I got a whole bunch of sea bills not too long ago, and by buying a whole bunch of basically around the Christmas time mech packs, 50% off, they were all pretty cheap. So I got me a whole bunch of them, which came with premium time. Premium time is where you buy packs or buy it from the website itself, which is accessible through the store or through the URL MechWarrior Online. Uh, what it does is it gives you bonuses, boosts, of which you see, which I'll be playing a game here not too long. You'll see at the end it gives you bonuses. It's like 50% bonus. I can't remember. It's a, it's a very high percentage of extra sea bills on top of the sea bills you, you have earned for that game. Now the Shadow Cats are medium class like the Novas and they'll probably replace my Novas because they carry a decent amount of weapons but they're much much faster. That being said going back to everything else I didn't get any extra assaults uh, I have the Marauders which I'll be showing in a, another episode I of course have the Shadow Cats and I got the Jinners. The Jinners is another uh, mech pack I bought but with that being said, we're going to be using my favored Nova Gazer Beam, which has the 10 Clan Small Pulse Lasers, as you see to the right. And then we're going to be working on building up Shadow Cats. Um, another thing I wanted to show was, over right here on the Home tab, underneath it is the Pilot Info. Bring it down, it shows what faction you're for. I'm with Clan Wolf, Clan Wolf International, Pilot Name... Uh, I've been with Clan Wolf for both through two years, which is, gives me Beta 2 title. And there are five tiers. The higher the tier, uh, the lower level pilots you'll be with. Obviously, I'm tier 4. I'm not superior by any means. I'm more about teamwork and helping the team out. I'm not for I'm going to get tier 1 or anything. Getting a higher tier does not give you additional bonuses so it's just letting you know what kind of people you're going to be most likely grouped with so with that being said i'm going to go ahead and change to the shadow cat i was working with and i should have enough money to work with it as well let's see let's see this is the one i was working on it's got uh then your large large pulse laser so we'll do the same on the other side double checking that yep could go on this side 
This is how much we have three tons additional left over, so we're doing some experimental building. Let's see, let's see. We can get some missiles if we wanted to. We already got the coordinates. Oh, we can get a mask. But we do not have the numbers it looks like required. It requires two slots. I'm going to have to ask a friend about that later. We're going to go ahead and save that. Get that fixed. We should have the tonnage because we have three tons additional left over. I'm going to have to ask my friend about that, see what that's about. Hmm. Item limit reached. Oh, it's because I have the uh, ECM and the Clan Actor Pro. You only have so many items. Let's see what happens if I take that off. Save. Did that change anything? Oh, didn't change anything, so we'll put the Clan Actor Pro back. Because having both is very important. ECM so no one spots me and after probes I could target them quicker and nobody with ECM could stop me from targeting them and finding their weak spots. But what the clan mask is it's a engine boost it makes you go faster but obviously you can't go extra boost infinitely it has a heat gauge of its own if you go over its heat gauge it starts not automatically damaging you like you're a traditional a heat gauge does it just keeps adding to that second heat gauge now if the second heat gauge your main gauge goes up past 100 percent then your core will actually start taking damage damaging your mech overall so since that's two tons and nothing else is really that important i'm just gonna add an additional heat sink so we have the excess left over i will ask my friend about that later well, we're going to run around a shadow cat and see what it's like. I was in the mech lab looking for loadout equipment, miscellanies, and uh, the mask, which makes you go faster. The reason why there's a red mark there is because it's already equipped. And I didn't know that. It is right here. It's already in the center torso omnipod, and you can't change the center torso because it's not on the list. But to show what that is, another way to uh, test your mech before you go out into combat is go to home with your current uh, mech selected and go to testing grounds, which is second from the bottom. We're going to go to Caustic Valley. It takes no time to load in at all because it's just you and you alone against non-AI mechs. It's the same mechs spawned in the same locations, so you can get a general idea how to look and everything. <coughs> also, right after this, I'm going to show you modules and why to get the modules and why they're so important. Alright, talked about that in episode uh, 1. But, it'd be more important that I actually show you. So we're going to go over here real quick. And C is my configure mask button, and you can't see it until you activate it. You press it to start it, and it makes you go quite a significant amount better. But hit C to shut it back down, see how it's starting to make that noise, let me know the heat gauge is going up. Target right, uh, hit R to lock on, in the upper right hand corner it shows what it is. It's a Jenner JR7-D. So it's a Jenner 7th edition D-Class, the rear, the right side of the mech, and then the front of it. Uh, based on what mouse and keyboard you have, that's your own decision how you configure your buttons. Uh, buttons 1, 2, 3, and 4 are on my uh, mouse. The 5th button is my shift, so I can alpha. Which I do not have configured. I should have that done. Um, once again, the arrows to adjust where it is. And then the right control, I have 
selected as the turn on and turn off as the third key turn on third key my third button now uh, does that but you're not here to see that I just have it left side right side and then shift to fire both give it a second to cool down and now it fires both at the same time anyway back to the target since I have uh, the active pro and I already have him pre-locked it locked back on him almost simultaneously that is his right arm if you look on the gauge above the left side is the front right below as you can see that's his right arm if I shoot the right arm now it changes to that color since Jenners don't have very much health they're in the light class he almost is gone I see how that's yellow and now it's gone red and orange can be bad but when you see no armor if you look up here I wish I can adjust it but I can't from this perspective but that yellow marker on his right center torso is uh, green still but the border of it is yellow meaning it's been damaged now if I hit it again back off of it real quick see and now it's a little bit darker shade but the green of it's still okay hit for a little bit longer now the border of it's gone that means it's exposed CT shoot it boom there goes his torso and notice by destroying his right torsos which you want to aim for his center is now already exposed and damaged and I even touched it yet but that means it's very easy to damage now it's already orange now it's really dark orange now it's red that's your last chance to take one more hit and now it's exposed one more hit and he's dead Oh, surprisingly he's not he's got a pretty tough core he probably has a lot of higher points in it but the point is to draw, uh, destroy that core that's what kills a mech anyway let's go find another one okay. space for uh, jump jets C to activate that mask makes you go faster but only specific mechs have that ability here we go another one we're gonna do this on the move I hit shift should fire both of them at the same time. See, once you're moving, it's a little bit harder to aim. But one of my friends taught me how to do a uh, jump jet fire. We're going to line this up for a uh, fire real quick. Now let's say right here is a rock, and I want to jump over and shoot him at the same time while I'm still running for this other mech. But hopefully that mech over there is like fighting someone over there, not paying attention to us. That's where uh, observation and experience comes into play to make that judgment. Because if he has nobody over there, and he obviously can tell he's looking this way, you don't want to charge him face to face. He'll smoke us because we're a medium class, and he's obviously a much higher class. Lock on him. Above him, Charlie, as I said earlier, uh, mechs are spawned randomly with different letters. And I would say Charlie Awesome to let people know that that is what the LRM boats or people who are within eyeshot of him that's priority tar targets awesome is a much higher class than we are and as you can tell in the upper left hand corner right above it I can't point at it he has a hundred percent health if I tag him now it's at 98 percent but I shot him in the core that's not where we want to shoot we want to shoot right there in that right center torso that's the weak part that'll tear off his arm and damage his center torso at the same time as soon as we rip it off Level and it's almost gone I'm gonna shoot one because I almost overheated there Ooh, we're almost overheated Heat level critical. and there goes his right arm and his torso is damaged at the same time so we just took off some of his weapons and damage him that's the fastest way to take somebody down unless they're a light if they're a light the best way is to shoot their legs tear their leg off let's just keep shooting that leg Heat level critical. also you can uh, another thing I'll show you is consumables I did not add any consumables to this mech because I haven't got run to that yet I'm just doing experimental builds critical. but this is the most simple mech to get a shadow cat with for some people. Heat level critical. His leg's almost gone. And his leg is gone. So now we just cut his original speed in half. 
so now you can't move very fast at all. Now with the heavy, that doesn't really matter because they don't move that generally fast and assault just crawl. So tearing off their leg is not important. Important is everything from the waist up. If you can cockpit them, go for it. I don't recommend it unless you're the same class or higher because you don't want to go toe to toe. He shoots us with an alpha, we're gone, we're dead, we're not even in this game anymore. Um, but with a light, if you take their leg off, now it's easy to kill them because lights, obviously, as that uh, Jinner over there, they don't have very much armor. Anyway, I'm gonna look over here real quick. This little screen right here would just spawn randomly in different areas of your cockpit. That is a kill count. We killed a Jinner, now we got one skull. That's just to help you keep track of how many kills you got in that game that you actually are getting credit for. The little spheres, they're nothing. That's just to make the UI a little bit more prettier, a little bit cooler. It's just a little gif that goes around and around. It has no significant importance. And anyway, back to the jump jet scenario start the jump jet let go of the jump jet fire continue the jump jets now just in case you couldn't hear what I was saying because based on the AI let me know what my fuel is you start the jump jet let go of the jump jet start the fire and restart the jump jet so fuel at 25% so that's where you get an accurate shot. Don't fire mid jump jet because it's going to be wherever that cursor is aiming. It's going to be off the wall aiming. That's just to help with you. So rise again, uh, R for lock on, that's the default. His core is already exposed, we're going to finish that off. He's red, I mean just a flick will probably kill him. Target destroyed. Yep, and he's dead. And as you can see on the left side over here, the kill count has gone up one more. That's just to let us know. I also have alt, you hold down alt that lets you look right, look left, up, down, I don't really trust it too much, so we're going to go over here, he's looking at us, you don't want to have him facing you, so we're going to hit C to speed up, get behind him. Now most people have their builds like this, majority, not all, but majority. All their armor is in the front, so if you really want to kill someone as quick as possible, you want to find that upper right torso, which would be his right side because he's facing away from us. If he was facing us, it'd be his left side. He's facing away from us, behind us. Look at that. It's already exposed in yellow. Now it's exposed red. Gone. That's how you want to kill someone as quickly as possible. The quickest way possible is cockpitting them, but that's when you are like expert level. I can't remember, I think it's right there. Yep, that's his cockpit right there. And it's already orange exposed. Target Boom. Destroyed. Gone. Dead. Over. We're going to move on just a little bit farther along. I'm just going to give you one more quick taste of it before we take this out for a joyride. But since this thing already has mask, we're gonna worry about those additional tons for something else. We may add another heat sink, as you could tell, we are overheating a lot. So that extra two tons of heat sinks will let us fire a lot more often. And we'll also go back again to show modules. Also, um, let's say like there's a fog or something like that between us. And you see that outline, just uh, aim for the general center. If you can't see him, let's say like, this is super bright. All you can see is trees and stuff like that. You really can't see him. Aim for that general center area and you hit him. Watch that gauge up there. I'm hitting his uh, right leg. So now his right leg's torn off. He ain't going anywhere anytime fast. We're just tagging his arms and all that. He's almost dead. Heat level critical. Also, once again, I did in the first episode O for override. Engaged. That lets us keep firing after 100%. But that's only if you know you're going to die and you want to just dish out as much damage as possible before they kill you or essentially you kill yourself by exploding, as you've seen in the first episode. Also, you hit O again for override. 
P for power Sustain down. Offline. That's if you, for whatever reason, want to power down and cool down much quicker. I highly non recommend doing that. Because if I'm powered down and let's say like a Dyer or an Atlas comes across, they're Any just going to eat us quiet. alive. Let's see. Fox try Atlas. Yeah. If he sees us power down, he's just going to have a heyday killing us. New target acquired. But cicadas are pretty tough. Which cicadas is in sphere and they are generally tough. Heat level critical. Wow, he is really tough. Heat level critical. Yeah, I think I'm gonna add another ton of heat sink and let's see what we do heat with the rest. Heat level critical. Heat level critical. I think I know what's up. I'm shooting him from the side, so I'm damaging his front and back, so I'm splitting the damage in half. So if I pick one side to shoot him from, that will do the most damage. That's that's my fault. Heat level critical. I begin to wonder if this guy's gonna die. That was my fault. I overheated there. Once I finish them, we're going to back up and I'm going to show you modules because I have no skills or anything unlocked in this mech. Nothing. Okay, well, that's it. Critical. In order to access testing grounds, just hit the escape button in the upper left -hand corner of your keyboard. It would uh, show you resume game, settings, your stats, blah blah blah, quit match, exit game. You want to make sure you hit quit match, exit game will bring you back to your desktop. Obviously we get no XP or ratings for doing a testing grounds because that's against AIs that are obviously not doing anything. So, I'm just going to go over that again real quick. Skills is the third tab on the top. It shows you all. I leave it alone as is. So that was a uh, shadow cat. Open that up. We're running around a B. I ran a game in this already. And I already have uh, 366 uh, XP. The reason why they're lit right now is because I have enough to use with general XP, but I do not want to touch those. So I'm going to hit back. Also in skills is plot trees. This is where you unlock your modules. See, they're only affordable through general XP. I want to go through Mac, sensors, seismic sensor. This is the thing I want badly to unlock. Again, I'm going to read it one more time. Allows detection of enemy mechs. The uh, vibrations in the ground must be stationary. And the sensor in range is 180 meters. So, we're going to go to Mech Lab. Loadouts. We already have masks. So, we have two additional tons to work with. Obviously, I'm going to add another clan heat sink. I'm going to put it in the other torso because you don't want to put all your eggs essentially in one basket because some guy destroys my right torso. I lose my clan ECM and a heat sink. So I put the uh, heat sink is in the other torso where it's with my active probe in this. I'm okay with losing something else, but I'm going to leave that alone. So we're going back to weapons. We only have missiles left available, which doesn't really thrill me too much because we only have a ton to work with. So I think I'm going to put that in my arms. So let's see. We're going to put this to 25. This to 25. This to 40. We're going to make our mech extra tough. The rule of thumb is always have five above your legs if you're going to put in the torso, which it won't allow me to. So we're going to put the rest in the arms. If it'll let me. And the rest in the head. So we have a point one ton Leftover that we're not using somewhere, which 
aggravates me a little bit. All right, all right, we'll go into tons real quick. Consumables. We're going to add an airstrike, which comes freely unlocked. We're going to turn autofill on. But it consumes 40,000 seed bills. You only need this once you have at least unlocked at least, at least two mechs. So we're going to add that. I'm thinking about adding another configuration for artillery strike, but I don't know what key I'm going to have it for yet. I think I may have it for Z, possibly. But I think I may have Z for something else already. Also, UAV uh, is the device I was talking about in episode 1, is the, the device that goes above and hovers and gives away your enemy's locations to your minimap, which are able to be shot down. That's why I don't use UAVs, because it's 40,000s that only last for about uh, 20 seconds, I think, maybe a little bit longer. Correct me if I'm wrong in comments and stuff like that. Uh, and let's say you pop one up, it could be immediately shot down after it's popped. So I'm going to probably work with Artillery Strike later on. But here we go on weapon modules. I need 3 million C bills to buy either one of these. I'm most likely going to go for... Uh, Clan Large Pulse Lasers Range 2. Put that there. And then I'm also going to do um, Advanced Zoom since this is a sniper build. Let's see, let's see, let's see. There's also Target Decay, which I don't really care too much for. But we're going to leave that as is. Save. Now our mech is a bit more beefier and ready to go. Also, I want to see if I can change its camo spec. The I own Clan Wolf. Yes, I do. Its colors. Make it look a little bit meaner looking. Let's see, let's see. I want to turn that lime green into another brown. Yeah, there we go. So it's a little bit darker shade. That. I'm going to get that shine off of them. I think that's the best we're going to do. A golden brown. For right now, at least. At least it's not saying, hey, here I am. Shoot me. And it doesn't look so pale color. Good. Also got some more additional cockpit items. This is going to be a favored shadow cat. So let's make it look nice. I want to roll around in style. Why not? We'll add a wolf mug. We'll add another... Wolf glass banner, and we have another game wolf uh, warhorn. Save. Also, you uh, here's another thing that's pretty good. I should show before I move on to another game. Down here in the bottom right corner is settings. Within settings is keyboard. These are the default key keys and then your turn of key which will override it and take care of it i'm going to scroll down the list and see anything takes z unfortunately something does toggle zoom mode my alternative is mouse three so we're going to get rid of that z and make it artillery strike let's find that real quick Alpha strike, which is my shift key. Press the button you want to configure, which is Z. Toggle mask is C. 
We want to ma make mask C. Yes, C is already taken, so we're going to do that. So as long as we're holding C, we don't have to worry about pressing it, unpressing it. Uh, it's just going to go whenever we're pushing it. I personally like it better that way. So now we got a mean new looking mech. We're going to minimize all this, make it look good. Also, if you're in a faction, it's all this. Attack, defend, what's important, click here to accept, blah, blah, blah. A lot of things are in TSs and raid calls and all that stuff. So you're free to build your own unit. So now we have two ER large lasers, clan active probe, and clan ECM, and two double heat sinks. And we were having heat sink issues earlier. Hopefully we don't have that issue. And we have the mask engine configured. Only specific uh, mechs have mask. And yes, you can make it better, uh, better and faster. And we'll worry about that later. Okay, now we have 595 experience. So now we can actually make this thing actually useful. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Nope, never mind. We need 750 XP for the cool run. The cool run increases heat dissipation by 7.5%. That's quite a bit. As you can tell, we didn't have much with heat, but we did with damage and a little bit on the latency side. I'll do some more adjustments to that. I was used to streaming speed with non-multiplayer games, and this is a multiplayer game online, so it consumes my bandwidth a bit more. So I'll do some more adjustments on that. Uh, one thing I forgot to add was in the mech lab. That's that. Okay, modules. Consumables, artillery strike, 40,000, and it won't let me since it's already taken. Hmm. Interesting. I guess it only lets me have one consumable at a time. So, let's see what UAV does. Oh, I can have both. So you can have airstrike or artillery strike in a UAV. So, hmm. We're going to save this. We're going to go into settings. Keyboard settings. Scroll all the way back down to those customizations. The launch UAV. T. Yes, override. And that should be good. E for launch uh, airstrike, Z for UAV. Save. You can also, yes, play with a Xbox 360 controller, a PlayStation controller. I highly do not recommend that unless that's just absolutely the only way you play. The reason why I'm saying that, there's way too, it's way more keyboard friendly. They haven't quite worked out the kinks in working with the toggle sticks and sensitivity with the joysticks on a controller and the uh, key configuration with the controller, making it sensitive, accurate, how much you have to pull the trigger or push a button to make a certain weapon activate. It's just much more highly suggested. Thank you for watching today's tutorial. I will see you at episode two.